Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your October 16th to the 31st, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be located in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhale whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. All right. So let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Aquarius. Aquarius. Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Awesome. Okay. Let's move this down just a bit for you. Oh, goodness. Okay. There we go. That's better. And now let's see what your chakra energy has to say, Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Oh, neat. Four. So we're starting here with the I am presence. This is my favorite card. This is the crown chakra. Now the way I've come to see the crown chakra is quite literally the crown that we wear upon our heads. So for a moment, let's do a meditation, All right? Sit back or close your eyes or just breathe deeply, relax, and visualize yourself sitting at this beautiful table and a person coming up holding this beautiful velvet box. They have white gloves on and placing the, the box on the table before you, Pisces. And they open up the box. And inside is a crown, a beautiful, wonderful crown that is yours. Now, what does that crown look like? Is it stunning? Is it just like from space? They will be able to know that you are the ruler of your universe. Is it something more demure, a little bit quieter, but still powerful? Is there no crown in there at all? Is there a part of you that doesn't feel as if you deserve one? 
Is the crown tarnished? Is the crown broken? As you look at it more closely, because you open it up and it's... But as you look at it closer, is it not what you expected? Is it poorly made? Is it cheaply done? The I am presence is I am. I am worthy of this crown. I am prosperous. I am bountiful. I am courageous. I am fierce. I am strong. But the I am presence is also I am sad. I am overwhelmed. I am angry. I am stressed. I am frustrated beyond belief. I don't know how this happened or why I'm here. What is your I am presence? And I know people say, oh, Dane, don't say the negative. But you have to hear the negative if you are to face it. Because if the negative rings truer than the positive, then this is what we have to work on. When I first heard the I am presence, when I first heard I am enough, because that is what it's boiling down to, I am enough to wear this crown. I am enough to move forward in prosperity. I am enough to take this crown and put it on my head and see myself as the ruler of my existence. That's what we're saying here. That's what divinity wants of us. And when I first heard, I am enough, I raged against it. I thought I still have so far to go. I still have so much to achieve. I still have so much to do. I'm nowhere close to enough. And if I think I am enough, it will make me complacent and it will make me fall back into a world that I don't want to be in anymore. Is that the reaction to I am enough? I am powerful, I am prosperous, I am successful, I am creative. I am bounty. Is it like, yeah, that's a nice idea, but not yet? Is it all the hurt, the pain, and the suffering that you have been through? Making it feel so hard to claim that as a truth. The I am presence is writing on your mirrors, I am enough. Is visualizing every morning when you get up, putting that crown upon your head. You might have to fix the crown. You might have to sit there and really work on visualizing a crown that is beautiful and for you and wonderful and being able to touch it, being able to hold it and being able to put it on your head. And then doing that every night as you go to sleep. Embracing that I am presence, Pisces. Embracing that fierceness. It leads you to divine wisdom. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above your crown. It is wisdom, it is grace, it is healing, it is power. It is finding that you are very drawn to sacred wisdom, to sacred truths. You're going to find yourself looking at things more deeply, more succinctly, more powerfully during this time, guided in a way that leads you to your sacral chakra which is in a creative way. Now, the sacral chakra holds a lot of negativity from this life and from past lives. It holds us back. and says, oh, no, you can't. Oh, no, you can't embrace that creativity. Oh, no, you can't move forward that way. There's a trauma. There's a drama. It could be within our DNA. You know, it could have been not being able to achieve somewhere in our DNA. People weren't able to achieve their goals, weren't able to live their dreams. They might have just been fighting to survive. You might find yourself at times just fighting to survive. That doesn't, you know, foster a creative way of thinking, a creative way of being. But there's creativity here. There's bringing that power forward. It's bringing your purpose forward. It's looking at what you desire. It's saying to the past lives that say, oh no, you can't. Oh yes, I can. It's saying to the DNA, trauma and drama, what is inherited from our parents and what was spoken over us when we were small. That doesn't get to be my future. You didn't get to define me before I could start to define me before I could start to see who I am and what I desire and what I want. This is taking that creative energy and moving it as a fire blazing through you to cultivate, to create, to become, to transform, to be what it is that you want to be. It is a time to harness that creative energy, Pisces. And it leads you to Mother, Mother Earth. This is the Earth Star Chakra located six inches below your feet. This is cultivation. This is creation. This is power. This is force. This is loving, caring, kindness. And this is also the force and the fierceness of tornadoes, earthquakes, and hurricanes. This is the power of the earth charging you and moving you forward. Now the left-hand side is your inner self. 
The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side is your public self, the public arena. So let's see. We start off, Pisces, with the Nine of Swords. Doubt, fear. And then you have strength coming in. I love that countdown from Nine to Eight. The Ten of Pentacles. Oh, that's brilliant. And the Knight of Pentacles. This is all about prosperity. And there's doubt here that you could ever have it. It's like, oh no. Oh no, I don't think I can. It's like other people get to be prosperous. I, I get to be out in the cold. It's like, oh no. Oh no. Oh no, there's power within you, Pisces. It's time to claim it. Then you have the Nine of Pentacles crowning your heart. That's beautiful. You have the repeat of the number nine. You're coming very close to a completion of a cycle. The Five of Pentacles, feeling like a pauper, out in the cold, but also now you're finding this warmth, this, this connection. Hierophant energy, Taurus energy, time frame, April 20th to May 20th. There's a really strong connection with a Taurian here, or with this Taurus stubborn, you know, dig your heels in, sensual creativity. And then you have the Ace of Swords. God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift of knowledge, handing you a gift of clarity, handing you a gift of vision and purpose. It leads you to the Four of Cups. In the public arena, you are going to be handed a gift, okay? By God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe. It's plainer than you think it should be or then you want it to be. It's not really going to be seen as the gift that it is, but it is a profound and beautiful gift. But it kind of takes you away from what you were looking at. You're taking aim. Oh, I love it. You're taking aim towards what you want, towards what you desire, towards what you need, and you're hitting your bullseye. You really are hitting the mark. And that leads you to the sun card, to the happiest card in the whole entire deck. And as you embrace this happiness, which this line right here is brilliant, you have the knight of wands, power, passion, Fire, determination, slaying of dragons, slaying of the beasts that hold us back, the ace of swords, right, as, as you are handed this gift, this gift is permeating every single aspect of this time, this gift of the mind, this gift of clarity of sight, of intuition, of understanding, but it is going to be something that we're going to see what your subconscious, like if you are taking this gift, but it is something that may feel at times just a little bit out of reach. You know, it's permeating everything and it will be taken fully, gained fully understood as, as time moves on. Yeah. Okay, let's see. The people who will be aiding you during this time, Pisces. Who will be aiding Pisces? October 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces. Who will be aiding Pisces? October 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces. Who will be aiding Pisces? October 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Fantastic, these three. So we start off with the moon. This is Pisces energy. This is a person who resonates just truly with you because they are at their core a Pisces just like you. And it doesn't mean that their sun sign has to be Pisces. It can just be a very prominent part of their personality. These don't even have to be people that you know in real life. These can be people that absolutely affect you in one way or another. You're inspired by them. But this is because this person faces their fears. They are exemplifying the moon card for us. They are facing their fears. They are looking at their triumphs and their disasters and everything in between. And they are not letting fear hold them back. And for Pisces, that is the lesson of existence, right? And, you know, we, we say for Pisces, you know, that is the lesson of existence. But it is also for every single human being on the face of this planet to not let fear hold them back. It's kind of like, what is it? If you work 10% harder, if you put in like 10% more time, effort into something, okay, you get a 40% increase on your return type of thing. And it's, and it's embracing that understanding. It's, it's here with the moon. It's like, okay, I can either spend this much energy in fear and in doubt and in chaos, or I can take that energy that I'm spending being afraid because I'm going to be afraid anyway. It's a natural biological response to things. And I'm going to use it to be so gosh darn determined that nobody can hold me back. And I'm going to see how that propels me forward. 
because I think that's a good plan. And then we have the King of Pentacles, Earth, Sun, Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, right? Connectivity, seeing the connections to things that you wouldn't normally see. You know, this is a person who pulls things together. This is a person who has a richness of touch, a richness of understanding, of power, of insight, of ideas. And you are really embracing that. You're inspired by that. They're showing you how to plant the seeds to reap a harvest. They're showing you different ways of moving forward that you hadn't expected, you hadn't anticipated. And it moves you to the Lord. It moves you to Aries energy, March 21st to April 19th. And now you could be born on the cusp with Aries energy. And so this could really, again, just sing to you powerfully and determinedly. And it can be that this person helps you see how to step into it. This could be the same person right here. Actually, this could all, because the power around them is like they all intertwined to really to really kickstart you and push you forward. The fear that holds you back from being mighty, determined, and, and prosperous, okay, is real. It is real because you have the ability to affect and to create and to become so much more than you even imagine, Pisces. And as you are embracing this idea and as you're seeing this person who claims their throne, who knows their truth, who, you know, kind of works their tush off and goes after what it is that they want. And I'm not saying that you don't, but I'm saying here that there's this kind of, there's this laser focus that is going to be so alluring to you that you're going to sit there and think, well, how can I do that? Or, oh my gosh, that must be like their superpower. And you're going to find that you are really incorporating that laser focus into your life. It doesn't mean that it has to be with something that, you know, people view as quote unquote successful. It can be you embrace that focus to with your family. It can be you embrace that focus with your home, with your creativity, with something you're doing on the side, that you're going to see the wealth kind of come in, the 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 brilliance of your life really start expanding and becoming because you are tired of the nine of swords. And the nine of swords crowns you crowns you. Worry, doubt, fear, anxiety, upset, anger. It's like the nine of swords crowns you. There's strength, there's determination, there's moving forward, and then there's the what if I fail? What if I fall? What if I can't? And here's the thing. If you are going to leap, if you are going to go after anything, the one thing that you can be assured of is that you will fall, fail, skin your knees, hurt yourself, be like, oh my gosh, that was terrifying. But you do it again. You go after, you do it a bit differently, but you don't let yourself be deterred. The nine of swords is worry, it's doubt. It can be working yourself too hard. It can be so focused on how you want to move forward and how you're going to succeed that it's robbing your sleep or that your mind just can't turn off and you're always looking, seeing, looking, seeing, looking, seeing. And here, it's a determination of purpose. It's a passion of power. It's, it's saying no more fear. It's saying no to fear. And it's saying yes to triumph. And that's what you're doing right here. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm done. I'm done being afraid because you're embracing strength. And you're seeing, and one of the brilliant things with you, Pisces, is that you have a heart that's, you know, that's as deep and as wide as the ocean. And when you're embracing strength, you already know that strength comes through kindness. But there is the frustration that comes in. And this is what that laser focus is really helping you see. Okay, it's like the sacred masculine energy that is saying, okay, this laser focus, this determination, this understanding, this, this, this power, you are embracing it, you know, and you are, are finding information in this world to help you embrace it, to help you move. Because with the strength card, you already know instinctually that strength does not come through brute force strength. It comes through compassion. It comes through connection. It comes through a greater understanding. And so as you embrace your personal strength, right, as you see yourself saying, this is me. I might not fit in with everybody else. It might not be how everybody wants me to be. But I am singing in, yeah, with that bird right there on the windowsill. I am singing in the new dawn. And in my spirit, in my mind, yes, I'm exhausted. But I am not defeated. And so, to face the dawn, to face the day, you embrace the strength of self the strength of passion, the strength of connection. And it is that strength and it's that looking fear right in the eye and saying, you've taken enough of my time. We've all had to do it. Lord knows. I think, do this every single day where it's like, 
it is so much easier to be afraid, to be overwhelmed, to have the world feel like you are Atlas and you are just, you're just being pushed down by everything that th that's thrown at you. But it's like, no, no more, no more will I stand small. It's like now it is time to stand tall. And that's what brings you the Ten of Pentacles. It's sheer gritty stubbornness, which I love. And this is a sense of prosperity that lasts for generations. This is instilling in yourself the ethics that you want to live by, the, the power that you desire. This is wealth or something you value as much as money coming in, blessing you, changing you. And when Spirit says less for generations, it does not mean that it is, is going to be passed down like an inheritance from generation to gener generation. It can be that it affects the souls of people. It changes the hearts of people. And it changes them for generations. It moves them forward. You may very well be, because we see with the I am presence and your, your energy here is so profound. It's like you are changing a generational curse. You know, you can call it a generational curse because it is a negativity that has been passed down. That is like within your DNA. It's like, oh, a place of lack. And it's like, no, now it's a place of triumph. Now it is a place of triumph. And it leads you to slowly, to steadily, but determinedly, determinedly, no, yes, stubbornly. There we go. We'll go with that word. Stubbornly. Going after your goals, your prosperity, the bounty that you are planting, the seeds that you are sowing, the harvest that is coming in. And you move slowly and steadily to that prosperity. You're going to want things overnight. We all do. I mean, most definitely. But it is really understanding and really knowing that it is within divine timing that you move forward and that you embrace success, prosperity, and bounty. It leads you to the Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is like, be patient. For your heart, be patient. Your harvest is coming in. Take in and relax and enjoy the respite, because when the harvest comes, my gosh, is there a lot of work. And you know that. You know that. This is that breather. This is that, that sense of, wow, look at what I've done. And your heart is looking at you as you move from doubts and fears into, into stubbornness, into prosperity, into power, into, into this embrace of your will. And it's like, wow, wow, I feel good about this because I, I know I feel it in my bones. And that if I keep on moving myself forward, if I keep on being discerning with the power that I am embracing and the way that I am embracing it, I move from a pauper, from a person out in the cold to a person prosperous, warm, safe, and bountiful. Because there is in, in the heart, okay, a pauper's mentality. And this is what we're looking at here. And this is what we're taking out and saying, no more. No more does it get to be that everybody else gets to be successful but me. No more does it get to be I am downtrodden, and alone and not guided forward. It's like now it is my time to claim my passion, to claim my truth, to claim my power, to move forward in my bounty and not be held back. And that's why you are finding that safe place. You're seeing it. And it's like, oh, wow. Oh, wow, that, that is my salvation. It is your strength of character, your determination. And then it is the Hierophant right here coming in. This has you being true to yourself. You cannot be anybody else, Pisces. You have to be true to you. This is finding that balance, finding that harmony, being the king of kings. And as you are, God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, hands you a gift of knowledge, of understanding, of insights, of beauty, of truth. It permeates this whole entire time. And yes, as Spirit stated, stated earlier, like it's not being taken right away, but it's permeating everything. It's like, I understand so much more. I have such greater insight. I am inspired and empowered and looking at things differently and openly and honestly. And it lets you see the gift that is coming. That 
you wouldn't expect or you wouldn't think, oh, well, that's a gift. You know, seriously, that's it. You know, you're going to see this from God's source spirit and you're going to be like, oh, wow. It's not what I expected. It might not even be what you wanted. But it is what I needed. It is what I desire. And it is what moves me forward. And as you see this, and this is the Four of Cups right here, you take aim. You take aim for what is needed, what you want from life. And as you're taking aim, the world is opening up to you. Like, things are opening up. And you thought, okay, I could only move left or right. And now you're finding there's roads in between that are opening. There are things that are more right for you coming forward. And it's like, why the heck not? Why the heck not? Why the heck not hit your mark? Go after what you desire. There's a sense here. And it's going to come to you in a way where you think you know, there's a gift coming to you in the public arena that you think oh, it's, it's not really that big a deal. But because your mind is looking at things differently, inspired by divinity more profoundly, more personally, more abundantly, you take aim. And you're like, oh, wow, that is the path I want to walk. Like, that's it. And it's exciting. And the sun shines on you. Happiness, joy, prosperity, success, bounty, beauty. You have this, this, beauty, this beautiful power coming in as you become the ruler as you, become the, as you become centered in your peace, in your prosperity, in your bounty, in what you desire. And people will try to take you by eyes. People will sit there and say, well, why not me? Why do you get the blessings and I don't? Because they come from a place of lack. They come from a place of fear. They think, oh, like a starvation place. It's kind of like, if you have it, then I don't get to have it. It's like, if you get to eat that, I don't get to eat it. And I'm still going to be hungry. And that's because they believe that there is not enough in the world. And there is enough. There absolutely is enough. And so as you see the sun shine on you, do not let people take away your glory, take away your blessings, take away your beauty, take away your truth. Take that radiance and shine brightly, powerfully, and truly with it. Because you're slaying dragons. Because you're moving forward in your passion, in your understanding, in what you desire. Because here, now, they say that our eyesight as human beings developed so well so that we could spot snakes. Snakes were the most threatening thing that lurked in the, in the grass and, and could kill us. So that's why we have keen eyes. Now, a dragon is a giant snake. And it doesn't hide away. But we face, but we see it, you know? And there's... It's overpowering. There's nothing we could do about it. But what do dragons do? They hoard away our gold. They hoard away our treasures. They take what we most value and they say, mine. And you're taking it back now. You're facing the fears that have kept you from flying as high as you want to, from going after what it is that you desire. And it's not saying that you are going to be, you know, rock star famous or, you know, a movie star or anything like that. It is saying that you were born to be successful. Maybe, and again, not on a world scale successful for most people, you know, for the majority of people. But to stand up straight, to hold your head up high, and to feel proud of your existence and yourself. That's what we were born to do. And here, it is taking it back. It is slaying the dragon. It is, you know, overcoming the demons. It is moving forward in our power of self in our ideas, in our, in our grace, in our beauty, and saying, oh no, I'm not having robbed from me what is my greatest treasure, what I desire most within my life, and the confidence within myself. Let's go deeper. Pisces. October 16th. To the 31st, 2020 Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels. Ooh, 
and spirit guides. These ones definitely want to be heard. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Oh, and let's see the people you need to be mindful of during this time. Who are the people that Pisces needs to be mindful of? October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Who are the people Pisces needs to be mindful of? October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. We have the Prince of Wands energy. Now you have a very positive Prince of Wands, Fire Sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius coming in. And here you have a rather, it's, yeah, it's, it's a negative one. So here are the people to be mindful of in this time are people who let their tempers get the best of them. They really run forward with it. Pisces, during this time, as you're claiming your strength and you're, you know, you're, you're, you have this voice, you have this power to you, you can be very kind of allured, yeah, kind of lured in to people who show great strength, who show great determination, who show like a force of will and of power and of personality. That's, that's going to be kind of sexy to you, you know, and you're going to sit there and be like, oh, well, either I'll emulate this or this is a person I want to be around. This person here is a person who likes the adulation, yes, and will take your will, will take what you desire and make it into his will and what he desires. And this could also be, of course, a she or however anyone identifies. And this is a sense here of not being caught up in the trauma drama that is them. At this time, it's like, if they are too forceful, if they are too overbearing, it's like, or if they are just forceful and overbearing, just for this time, it's like kind of like step back a bit and see what happens when you're not there to adulate there. See what happens when you know, if they just forget about you completely, you know, that kind of thing. But also there can be something that you're reading, something that's inspiring you. And it's like, oh, I'm just going to go out and forcefully take everything. It's like, no, 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 I'm setting down a plan. I'm looking at things and I'm coming from things from the heart. And that is going to be my greatest power and my greatest truth. And then we have the Scorpio energy, a time frame of October 23rd to November 21st. This is a person who is a bit sneaky. This is a person who sees the grace of it all. And it's kind of waiting to see what happens, waiting to see how things move forward. And they, they keep a lot to themselves. A lot. And then we have Sir Nunus, Capricorn energy, December 22nd to January 19th. This, this person kind of has the same energy as a Scorpio right now, as the kind of like, I'm going to see what happens. But Capricorn energy here, the Sununus energy, is neither good nor bad, right? The Sununus energy is the god of the forest. And what I think is very interesting is that you have the horned god and the horned god here. So there's this masculine, this masculine, the sacred masculine, okay, of the forest, of nature, of creation. And there, it's aligned with the sacred feminine. So that's very interesting. It's like the two powers coming together. And this is a sense that, you know, this person doesn't nurture, okay? This person does not nurture. This person is like, let me see if I add a little bit of chaos, a little bit of the unknown here, what you do. How do you respond? How do you move forward? And you're not really going to appreciate that at all. That's just going to be their way of thinking. Or it's kind of like, uh, it's not... It's, yeah, they just like rattling the boat. They're just one of those people that's like, will always play devil's advocate, who will always kind of just be the one to like poke the bear or hit the hornet's nest and just be really mindful of that person because they will cause chaos. Like this Scorpio energy is just like not interested. They're, they're walking their own path. They're doing their own thing. They could be a little bit sneaky and they can gather up information, you know, gather up information, hold it on, hold on to it for an obscenely long time so that they can use it when it is most valuable for them. So just be mindful of that. But this person here, they just, they just like to cause a bit of havoc, a bit of chaos. 
They can also be very, very, very successful people. Very successful people. People very grounded, very centered, know what it is that they want. And that's because they can cause havoc and know how to, you know, how to move in it without being hit by it. So we have here, we have Virgo energy, okay? The Hermit, August 23rd to September 22nd. We have the King of Cups. I love that over the Ten of, of Pentacles. So you are definitely taking this gift that moves you forward, this prosperity, this blessing. You have the Hangman. You see things differently than everybody else. You're going to think that that's a bad thing, Pisces. It's really not. It's really not. Then you have the Earth Mother. You know, as you move forward in prosperity and success, you're claiming a throne. And yeah, you're claiming a throne that you thought was lost. You're claiming a path you you thought you couldn't walk. You thought like, okay, that's just not what I can do. And you're finding out, yes, it is. You have undergone a change. You have had your world turned upside down. And, oh, well, most definitely. You have the Wheel of Fortune here. It's like that world turned upside down. And at times here within your heart, even though you're claiming a path, that you didn't think you could. You're claiming a power that you thought may very well be lost to you. You're still healing from the upheaval. You're still healing from the chaos. And at times it feels like you're on a merry-go-round. You have the Ace of Pentacles coming in, God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift of prosperity. You are definitely taking it. So that is beautiful. And this is in the public arena. This is like a gift of wealth coming in, blessing you. And it brings you to a new journey. It brings you to a new chapter. And you didn't think that this could be yours. And look at how many, oh my gosh. Look, you have all major arcana cards here. Except for two, you have one court card and one ace. I mean, well, you have two court cards and one ace. There we go. And that, that is insane. That is insane. This is a heavy hitting time. And as you go deeper into it, it might be like surface. On the surface, it's like win, win, win. Or, you know, triumph, triumph, triumph kind of thing. It's like, I, I'm seeing what I want. I'm moving forward. I know I'm on the right path type of thing. And then as we get deeper, it's like, oh, this is a time of like sink or swim. This is a time of grabbing the bull by the horns and saying, this is what I want. This is where I'm going. And I'm connecting with me. And I know that nobody else can do this but me because you have here, you have here the hermit. So as you have the nightmares come, but as you have the strength to conquer them come, you turn inward. It's like, what do I want? What do I want? You're coming to an end of a cycle. Okay, you have a nine over a nine. You're coming to an end of a cycle. What do you want? When this cycle ends, when you're off the merry-go-round, okay, or the Ferris wheel, which is scarier, so Ferris wheel. When you're off the Ferris wheel, what do you want? What do you want on the other side? What do you want? Where are you headed? Yeah. Because you have your highs, your lows, your lefts, your rights. You have a new season coming in. And this is a connecting with you. This is seeing your sacred truth. This is seeing what you desire. This is quieting the world and listening to your heart. And realizing, really realizing, Pisces, that the prosperity comes. And this is true for everyone. It's like, but it's such a powerful truth. And it's so beautifully expressed in the cards. That once we find out that the only person we can rule is ourselves. Once we find out that we are simply kings of a nation of one. Of ourselves. Then we can promote a change in us. That moves us forward in a way that we want to, in a way that we need to, in a way that we desire. Because in the Rider Waite Smith deck, the King of Cups is a king sitting on his throne on a rock in the water, in the in the ocean. It's implied that yes, he's king of more, but is it seen? No, it's not. And so yes, it's implied that we are kings and queens and everything in between of more. But really, the only one who we have any say over. The only one who we can tell what to do every minute of every hour of the day is ourselves. And even then we're rubbish at it. Even then we eat the cookie that we weren't going to eat. We stay up later than we should have stayed up. We procrastinate. We do this. We do that. We're messier than we should be. And it's like, man, 
you know, if we can't even rule ourselves, <laughs> you know, how are we supposed to rule everybody else? And it's paying homage to that. It's saying, okay, I see it. I don't like it, but I understand it. And that's what brings you wealth. That's what brings you prosperity that lasts for generations because it is coming to that realization and then it is ruling your life well. And you move forward slowly and steadily in prosperity and you see things differently. Your path is not the well-traveled, well-worn path. It is something, excuse me, profoundly different, profoundly you. And because of that, you're going to think you're wrong, but you're not. You are nurturing, cultivating, creating, and embracing this prosperity and moving away from the pauper mindset, from the sense of lack to the sense of bounty. And as you do so, you have this love, you have this brilliance, you have this blessing coming in. You have this power of the, of the empress. You're claiming a voice that you didn't know you had, a strength of, of compassion and brilliance that is turning into a powerhouse of power for you. You're walking down a path you didn't think you could walk. You're walking into a power, into a brilliance that you didn't think you could have, that you didn't think was yours. And as you do so, you're facing the tower times. It's either you are being that king of kings, you are being that calm, that calm port in the storm as everything falls around you, or you are learning how to be that pillar of strength for yourself as the world falls around you, as upheavals come, as questions, you know, have thrown at you, at you as doubts and fears and angers and upsets come forward. And it's like, I will not, I will not be destroyed. This is divinity pushing you out of your comfort zone. Divinity pushes everybody out of their comfort zone at times. They do. It doesn't make it less painful. It doesn't make it less upsetting. But it's looking at our lives and saying, okay, it's either sink or swim. And I'm going to swim. And not only am I going to swim, I'm going to rebuild taller and better than ever before. I'm going to create what it is that I desire. Because this is what I fight for. This is what I want. My truth, my brilliance, and my success. And it leads you to the wheel of fortune. It leads you to a new dawn, a new day coming in. It leads you to a change of seasons. It leads you to, yes, feeling like you're on a roller coaster ride. You know, feeling like you're doubting yourself, feeling like you're on top of the world one day and at the bottom of, you know, the compost heap the next. And you're sitting there and you're like, well, this is fun. I'm realizing that the power of what you have learned, okay, because it's over the Ace of Swords, is a divine gift that helps you conquer demons and move forward in strength. And it brings you in the public arena as you claim a gift that didn't seem like a gift or maybe you didn't even want it. You were looking at it and you're like, oh my gosh, how foolish, how, you know, ugh, is this? But it helps you take aim and it makes the dawn come into your life and it brings you a prosperity that you take, that you harness, that you embrace, that you love. And it sends you on a road, and it sends you down a path that you could hardly have imagined. And people will think you're foolish as you slay your dragons, as you embrace your, your strength. People will sit there and be like, oh my gosh, Pisces, what the heck are you doing? Seriously? And it's like, yeah, seriously. Because this is the fool's road. And remember, the fool's road disguises the hero's path. Every single person who sets out to be a hero. And by a hero, I don't mean I'm going to be a hero of your existence type of thing. You know, not deciding to be Hercules. And Hercules' you know, monumental feats were usually done in penance for his berserker mentality of, of being. He would just fly into a rage and he would destroy everything that he loved. He literally destroyed his whole entire family and then went and did these impossible feats to do penance for what he had destroyed. 
And so it's not sitting there and saying, oh, I'm going to be this hero. Oh, I have this tremendous strength that nobody can, can stop because everything comes at a price. But it is the hero's path of saying, this is my truth. And I get to live the brilliance of my soul, the power of my prosperity, the abundance of my existence, of my wonderment, of my grace. And I get to move forward in that truth and be a hero of my existence. And there's a celebration in that. There really, really is. Because that's really brave. And most people never even think of doing it. They think of what the world owes them. They think of, you know, schemes and, you know, or, you know, they just resign themselves. But you, you're striving for greatness here. Let's see what your spirit animal has to say, what your spirit animals have to say. Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. October 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. So we're starting off here with the rabbit spirit. Now is a lucky time. And yeah, most definitely. Now is a lucky time for you. You have a lucky star to you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, under a lucky star. That's why, oh, that's why Aquarius came up when, when I was first shuffling. Because they are the star. And this is the time where you start to shine. Where you get to shine. And when you look, and where you look at the highest form of your perfection. And say, yeah. That's what I'm striving for. And you have the swan spirit. It's time for a deep dive. It's time to dive deeply into what you want, into what you desire, into what you're passionate about, and to embrace that deep dive to your truth. And as you do so, you have the wombat spirit. It says, be at home. Be at home within yourself. Be at home with what you are creating, with what you desire, with what you are cultivating ah, within your life. My goodness, and they all come tumbling down. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> Almost brilliant. Your subconscious spirit animal message is the porcupine spirit. Time for a beginner's mind. And I always thought that that was so oddly worded. And then I realized that it's a Buddhist saying. It's time for a beginner's mind. It's time to come to things almost as a child would. With no preconceived notions, with no, you know, preconceived ideas, prejudices, you know, dire situations like, oh my gosh, fatalistic ideas, you know, nihilistic tendencies. It's time to come to things and say it's time to begin. It is time to begin. And see where this road takes me. Your subconscious person message <laughs> is Aquarius. Aquarius walks with you. Now, of course, this can be amplified if you are born on the cusp with Aquarius, but you are you're following your stars. And in a way, it's written in your stars. It's a part of your truth that you were born with. You're pouring the waters out into the world. You're embracing what you desire. You're looking at what your hopes and your dreams are. And you're moving towards a truth that is breathtaking and that is brilliant. in the highest form of your perfection coming forward. Your subconscious chakra message is rebirth, earth star chakra, located six inches below your feet. You are being reborn, and you are seeing the beauty and the horror. You are seeing the, the exquisite and the surreal, the unimaginable. And you are embracing both the day and the night. You are embracing a change in the power. You are embracing the self that we show to the world and the shadow self that can hold us back at times. Well, yeah, if we, if we sit there and do not acknowledge 
that there, that there is power within each and every one of us that can be fierce and frightening and overwhelming and, and, and wrong. Like, you know, we sit there and we think, oh, I can't, I couldn't possibly do anything bad. Like a, a naive understanding of life. And it's like, oh no, a monster can live in each and every one of us. It is whether we decide to let it come out. And you are being transformed by the power of knowing that, yes, there is a horrific ability in human beings to be monsters. But I have the power within me, and I am embracing that power to not let that monster out and to say, I will not walk a monstrous path. And it leads you to the subconscious of the tarot, the Three of Cups. Celebrate those who have stood by you and celebrate you. And it's time to move past those who have betrayed in a way that seems unforgivable and is unforgivable. The person who raised their cup to you, who said, I celebrate you, and then stabbed you in the back, walked away, hurt you, tried to destroy you. That person doesn't get to have a say in your life anymore. That person's voice doesn't get to echo in your ears. You walk in your triumph, in your beauty, and in your truth. And if the only people who celebrate you are you and your angels and your spirit guides, that is a brilliant place to start. To go deeper into the subconscious message, we have the Scorpio energy, the death guard. You are transformed because this is a transforming time. It is profoundly and beautifully transformative. It is a time where you are seeing a power within you, where you are walking a path that embraces the shadows of this world, that embraces the in-betweens. That thing during this time is going to be white page, black ink, everything spelled out, everything crystal clear. There's a myriad and a multitude of grays. There is a complexity in the shadowing and in the, the coloring of existence. And you're seeing it as something beautiful. It can be scary at times, yes, but beautiful and profound. All right, Pisces, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we walk in the power and the truth of our success, of our bounty, of our grace, and of our sheer determination of will. Nothing and no one will hold us back. You are mighty, and you are embracing that might. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony.